Welcome to my channel, Ken here. Today, let's take a look at the Mac DSP APB16. One rack space unit connected via Thunderbolt, 16 mono channels or eight stereo channels of analog goodness with compressors and EQ. Let's go. So I put this little eight bar piece together here. Right here it has the guitars in green, strings in brown, brass in yellow, and a flute in purple. So let me play this piece first. I'll show you the actual inserts of the APB compressors and so forth and so on. First and foremost, I have a, the multiband compressor on the, on the master. You can see I just uh, compressed it a little bit. I'll play a little bit. So it's just one or two dBs of compression. Very subtle. This is mostly to glue it together, but if you listen to it from the beginning and I'll bypass it. And you can see I actually, there's an increase in the volume from this and this because I also use it to get the right level uh, at the end. But very simple. Just a little bit of saturation here, 4 and 4.7, 4.0 ratio, slow attack, fast, medium fast release, and these buttons, THR is how grabby it is, and the gain obviously. But this is not going to be a, a in-depth review of each plugin. This is just how I use it for a project like this. On the guitar, which I want to solo, So I'm using uh, the C18 compressor on the guitar as bus, as you can see, not an individual guitar. There are two guitars here, obviously, but on, as a bus. And then I EQ a little bit with the uh, Royal Q. So I'll turn them both off and play again. really well to kind of tug the guitars into the mix so I can blend it with the orchestral elements as well as getting a little bit of the honkiness out and give it a little more top in to brighten it up a little bit and give it a little more clarity. Kind of a fast attack to, to uh, get a little bit of the plunkiness out and then longer release so I can give a little more sustain and fullness to the guitar. Here's the wind and basically the Royal Mew again being one of the most transparent compressors in this collection. Off. So it's really subtle, this compressor. I mean, I add a little bit of, of, of fullness to the flute to, so it doesn't sound so thin because it's supposed to be a solo flute in this ensemble. Back to 
the full mix and I'll turn turn the uh, all the uh, APBs off here Mastering first. So I'll admit I'm mixing a little bit uh, with the compressor output gain. I always think that analog gear when you amplify it sounds kind of nice. It's no exception with the APB. Now you can see I've used all the slots up on this little APB status here to the left. Um, so that's because, you know, if I turn this mastering multiband compressor off, by completely off by doing this you can see it frees up six slots so this one is heavy duty you got to be very strategic about this particular compressor because it's it's taking so many resources from the uh, hardware unit so as you can see we're back to the full everything else takes two slots if it's a stereo unit every mono unit takes one slot in the uh, hardware so i'm going to play with the with the with this compressor a little bit so you can see uh, what happens to the guitars in the mix so that's way too much uh, it kind of loses life So this byte is a saturator um, that basically adds saturation to it and uh, as you can hear it's kind of uh, pushes it forward a little bit. So in context to this orchestral thing, uh, definitely don't want to push it forward in the mix. I mean rock and roll heavy metal or whatever, it's a good idea to push it forward, but when you have this lush orchestral with lots of reverb and so forth, it, it's, it's necessary to tuck it into the mix. I have a rock project, metal, 80s type thing, just guitars, bass, drums, and I'll go through, you know, some APB on this. Yeah, let's listen to the track first. <laughs>
snare, I have a parallel compression on this these two stems right here, the snare clean, the snare comp. Uh, on the comp channel, I have the chicken head. So here we go. Let me solo the snare. Subtle compression. And uh, the snare clean has no compression on it. So they get summed together here on the snare sum, and I have a Royal Q, I mean, a Royal Q EQ here. Just carving out some of that honkiness uh, at five five hundred and adding a little bit of bite here at three three point three case just to uh, make it poke out in the in the mix a full drum kit the snare here gets sent to the high drum Symbols get to send to a high drum, the toms, but not the bass drum. On the symbols, I have another compressor here. Very, very, very subtle compression. And obviously some saturation. On this bias switch here, when you turn it clockwise, it will emphasize the higher frequencies and and affect the lower frequencies less. So you have basically like a filter-ish thing going here. And then there's an EQ that I'm not using at all. You know, we'd have to push that in, but this is good enough. Of course, the, there's an EQ on, on the overheads to remove some of the low end as well. But you can see it's not a lot of compression, but there's some saturation going on as well. On the high drum, which is basically everything but the kick drum, I have another Royal Mew here. That's doing a little more heavy lifting. You can clearly hear how it glues this uh, drum kit together. It's pretty obvious to me anyway. Um, with some saturation, uh, subtle compression. It's only two dBs, but big difference in sound, I think. Again, a little more compression in the upper region than on the lower region. From there, I actually have Compression on the toms. So let me open that guy. Another Royal Mew. You can see I'm a fan of the Royal Mew. And um, I'm just going to loop some toms back here. More punchy, um, saturated a little bit, pushed forward in the mix of, due to the saturation, but it's not a huge amount of compression we're talking about again. The ratio of only two, and it's a little grabby because of the THR button here. Basically the threshold is pushed back a little bit. Grabbing a little more, but there's not a huge amount of compression on this. Also, if you notice, it kind of glues the toms together to make them one unit. It makes it easier in the mix. The bass drum 
is bypassing all this compression and everything. It's running into the sum of all the drums. And uh, here I have another Royal Mew. And let me just get the whole loop going. And essentially, the Royal Mew on this drum sum track, I'm emphasizing the highs a lot and saturating it slightly grabby on the threshold and I'm squashing the peaks a little bit. And also you can see I'm using the gain kind of to boost the signal a little bit. I know, um, but I just like the the way this APB unit uh, amplifies the signal. It definitely changes the sound slightly if you do this. It sounds like there's a little more saturation going on when you boost the gain a little bit. Ratio 3.5. So that's the drums with the APV. Um, let me go to the bass. Here we have the chicken head on the bass, which is phenomenal on bass to me. It's definitely in the top five of compressors that I've ever heard on a bass. So I really like this on bass. So let's see what we can do. We'll turn it off first. Six to one ratio, relatively slow attack, relatively fast release, well not super fast, not super slow. Let me just set it to unit again. And the sauce button which is a saturation thing. Sounds great on this. Give me the beef, baby. Not the chicken. So it's relatively medium threshold here, but Obviously that has to do with level, so I'll turn that. Do a ratio thing. Off. And in the mix. So it works pretty well. And now I've used up all 16 channels for this, just on drums and bass. So what do I think about the APB? The APB is great because you're getting all these plugins as they come up with new ones and it expands the palette quite a bit. They came up with the Royal Q and the Royal Mew this year, which was really a step up because they, the other plugins are kind of in the same category, but this one was a little different. So I'm looking forward to what the future brings with this unit. 
I'm hoping on my wish list that they put out a pure saturation unit for this thing. And I also hope that they have a blend knob for wet dry so you can do you can do parallel compression directly on the unit itself. That would be nice as well. I think that it's really convenient to have it as a thunderbolt instead of using up IOs on your audio interface, which is huge. Having on-screen control is nice. Uh, it's not unique to this company because both BetterMaker and Wes Audio and Tegler, maybe I'm missing some, they all can do this. But what they can do is run this on a Thunderbolt cable, which makes it hugely expansive to your system without having to have another audio interface and all the trouble that brings and cabling and so forth and so on. It's pretty easy to set up and it you know, just have to register the plugins and the unit and you're up and running. So I think it's a very good idea, excellent idea to be honest. It definitely sounds analog. It has all the benefits of analog, like when the distortion comes in, it's analog distortion, not digital. It has the ability to kind of push things a little more than a digital plugin. And it sounds analog for sure. It's very analog sounding. So great unit. Looking forward to more. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, share, subscribe. And until next time, take care.